I've got a few tips for you today about how to road trip without going off the rails, which I know is something that pretty much all of us have encountered in our lifetimes and will probably encounter again, that a lot of the fun of road trips is kind of being spontaneous and making road uh, rest stops and picking out snacks at convenience stores that you don't normally have. And while it's fun, it can often leave us, you know, either arriving at our destination or when we come home from, you know, vacation or wherever it is we're going, just kind of feeling crappy that we've been, you know, less active and, you know, eating all these foods that we don't normally. So I wanted to talk about a few things that you can do to avoid feeling that way when you get back and uh, some choices that you can make to avoid going off the rails when you're road tripping. If you don't know me, my name is Esther Avant. I'm a personal trainer and nutrition coach, and I work with women to help them lose weight, to become healthier, happier, and more confident by making sustainable changes to their day-to-day -day lives. So my first tip to avoid going off the rails when you're road tripping is to have something of a plan. And like I said, I know that a lot of the appeal of the road trip in the first place is that you are, you know, you have the ability to be kind of spontaneous. You can decide we're going to stop here instead of there, or that thing looked cool, let's make an, you know, an unscheduled stop, or, you know, this restaurant that we just drove by looks really good, let's stop there. So I do know that there's a lot of that spontaneity, spontaneity involved. Um, but you can still have something of a plan whether that's okay we're planning on stopping somewhere for lunch we don't know where it's going to be but we know that lunch is going to be like our main our biggest meal of the day in that case you can make the other meals smaller and basically just lean protein and veggies that way you're saving some of your smart carbs and your healthy fats for your your larger meal um, Similarly, if you are a family that gets on the road super early and then you drive as far as you can and then do a big, you know, kind of brunch, late breakfast kind of thing, maybe you do just a couple of snacks that you bring with you in, uh, in the car from home and then you know, try to sleep and, you know, uh, just kind of get yourself to breakfast knowing that you can be a little bit more indulgent then. But basically, just trying to figure out some kind of of plan for the day, kind of map out, you know, what time are we planning on arriving, how many stops do we think we'll be making, how many snacks do we really need, because I know that I go in and just, you know, kind of grab, grab things and end up with, you know, what would be, under normal circumstances, weeks worth of snacks. But for some reason, like, oh, I'm on a road trip, I feel like I can eat them all, and all of them all at once. Um, so that brings me to my second tip, which is twofold. Uh, number one, if you know which snacks you're going to be buying on the road, just buy them in advance and bring them with you. This is going to benefit you in a few ways. Uh, number one being you're not going to make those kind of impulse buys when you get somewhere and you're like, oh yes, I do need seven street tacos because they're only a dollar. Um, and then you end up eating seven street tacos that you didn't even want. Um, um, so it'll save you from those impulse buys. It'll also save you a lot of money because you know that when you um, buy food at the convenience store, the prices are a lot more expensive than if you went to like your local um, Walmart or to somewhere like Costco or something like that. So if you know what snacks you're going to want or what you're going to end up buying, just buy them in advance. And then the third benefit of that is that you can then pre-portion them out because I know it's a very common uh, thing to basically just eat whatever is in the bag. So if you get this bag of jerky that says that it's six servings, it's probably not gonna last six servings, like maybe one or two, maybe you know the two of you in the front seat will split the bag, but, um, but you're not very mindful of what normal portions are. So if you buy your snacks in advance, you can pre-portion them out into single serving baggies, and then at least you have that kind of added hurdle and that added awareness of, oh, I just reached back in for my third serving. It's kind of triggering okay, I'm, I'm starting to go overboard. Whereas if it's just in one big container, you can just, you know, play tricks with yourself and say, oh, it's not quite been one yet. Oh, I'm barely at two. So if you buy them in advance, you can pre-portion them. So all the benefits there of buying them in advance. Um, but if you don't, if you do want to have like kind of that fun of, well, I'm just gonna go to the uh, convenience store and get what looks, um, looks good to me, still be mindful of portions. Take a look at the back of the package, look at the nutrition label, see how many servings are in there, um, how many pieces are a serving, and then get yourself out that serving and put the bag, the rest of the bag somewhere that you can't reach it. If that means putting it in the trunk somewhere like absolutely out of reach, do it because that's what's gonna cut down on that mindless snacking where you have nothing to distract yourself. 
Um, and then my last tip to avoid going off the rails when you're road tripping is to do something active every time you make a stop. And I'm not saying like do a full-fledged workout, though you certainly could if you and your uh, travel mates are so inclined, but I mean just doing something to get the blood flowing. You're stiff from sitting down, so at the very least do some, some quick stretches to you know kind of open things up. Um, but you know something simple like every time we stop we're gonna do 10 squats and 10 push-ups against the car or we're gonna park as far away as we can and we're gonna lunge to the bathroom or we're gonna race to the front door um, those are all <laughs> those are all options um, just just something to to be a little bit active maybe break a little bit of a sweat but just to do something that feels good that's like intentional movement um, and so you'll feel better from just having just having done it, but it may also benefit you in that then you're feeling like you did something good for yourself, you haven't just been a totally lazy um, slug just sitting down all day, and it might lead you to be more mindful when you're snacking or eating in the car, and it might lead you to make better choices when you get to a convenience store or to a restaurant as you're thinking, oh, you know, I did just do, you know, we stopped four times, so I did 40 lunges and 40 squats and 40 push-ups, like, now I feel like I got kind of a workout, maybe I'm gonna get, you know, a piece of fruit instead of a candy bar, you know, who knows. Um, but you will definitely mentally and physically feel better because oftentimes when we feel the worst is when we're not making good food choices and we're being inactive. So if you can at least do one or the other, you're already ahead of the game and then that um, may also benefit you by motivating you in, uh, in the other way as well. So I hope you enjoyed those tips and I'll talk to you soon.